There is no reason anymore not to run Windows 10 Pro retail version on your PC, get it now $12.50 only, instant delivery on a brand new secured web store. Welcome to this second part of the Skyrim 2021 Ultimate Graphics Tutorial um, where we are going to install Mod Organizer 2, still in my opinion in 2021 the best tool to install and organize mods. Uh, even while we have Vortex uh, nowadays, I still prefer Mod Organizer 2 and luckily also the author of this guide also advises Mod Organizer 2, so that's great. You can open up this link in a new tab, Mod Organizer 2. Then click on files and download the installer version. That's the one we're going to use. All right. Then you can go to your, uh, yeah, well, installed, uh, your downloaded installer from Mod Organizer. Right click on it, run as administrator. And then let's see, we do have a, yeah, the following screen accept the agreement. Um, install Mod Organizer somewhere in a folder uh, which is not program files 86, as I mentioned before. I'm going to install all of my modding tools in programs mod tools, but feel free to use any folder um, except again for program files 86. So I'm going to name it mod organizer 2 then click next. You can uh, leave all these checkboxes as it is. Um, then click next again. Mod organizer a desktop shortcut. Yes, we're going to uh, use mod organizer 2 a lot. So I recommend to create a desktop shortcut. Click next, click and install. And then um, in a couple of seconds, Mod Organizer 2 should uh, be installed. I just paused the video for a second. That was actually pretty quick. Okay, let's launch Mod Organizer immediately. So we want to create a new instance, uh, name it Skyrim SE. It's already a profile, so it will automatically fill this in. Click OK. Um, this is important. You have to make sure to notice this that, uh, like I mentioned before, all the stuff from Mod Organizer 2 will be installed here in your app data folder. Um, the thing is, if you change it now, that's the reason. That's the thing I had. If you change it to a different folder right now, uh, for some reason it doesn't really work that uh, well anymore. It doesn't really recognize the, the new paths. So yeah, I would just leave it uh, on those app data folder. Um, yeah, just make sure where you have installed it that you have a lot of free space for mod organizer mods to be handled. So there's a difference with the downloaded mods. So the stuff we did download here, these, these are the downloaded mods because mod organizer will also install them um, to load along with Skyrim Special Edition. So that's why you make sure uh, you want to make sure that you have a lot of free disk space where you have also installed mod organizer too because it will, I think, probably will install on your Windows. Um, drive on the app data where your windows is installed so your profiles app data so yeah once you've done that we don't want the tutorials not needed for us um uh, yeah you can set up um mod organized to handle next nexus links uh, i don't do it for now uh so i'm going to also choose no don't ask again as you can see, since we already installed Skyrim Script Extender, the button shows up here already. Um, the guide from the 2021 guide actually asks us if we want to check that uh, our settings are already on the highest uh, in, the, uh, in the launcher. So yeah, we can check that again. We already did set that, but let's just check it again. So in this drop down menu, select Skyrim Special Edition Launcher, click Run. And this launcher uh, will pop up, which is the same launcher that pops up from Steam. Um, but we're not going to use this launcher anymore. We're going to use Skyrim Script Extender. Click on Options. Uh, make sure to check again. You probably did set this already that you have ultra settings uh, and all the max quality, max sliders, etc., etc. Uh, so if you didn't uh, set the settings correctly, you can do it now again. All right, and then we can set it back to Skyrim Script Extender. So we're not going to run Skyrim uh, through Steam anymore with the original executables, but with Skyrim Script Extender. However, the game does require you to have Steam open 
else it will give you an error that it cannot launch the game and you need to have Steam open, but you will see that eventually if you some if you might forget it. Let's see um, if this guide actually say anything more. Yeah, this is pretty important. It's a good thing it mentions it here. Uh, go to your Steam, go to library, go to your Skyrim Special Edition game here. Right click uh, on the game, select properties. You want to disable this, enable the Steam overlay while in game. If it, So if it's been checked, make sure you uncheck it. And on updates, you want to select this option. You probably have always keep this game updated. That's not what you want. Only update this game when I launch it. The reason for that is that even, um, uh, yeah, how do you say it? Even if you launch the game, you will do that with Skyrim Script Extender. And uh, Steam doesn't really recognize this as a game launch from Steam. Why is this important? Uh, because if there is a new update um, uh, applied to Skyrim Special Edition, a lot of mods don't work anymore. And usually what we have seen so far in 2019, Bethesda did push out a couple of weird updates in my opinion, very small ones which didn't really add much to the game. Uh, but they broke a lot of mods, especially Skyrim Script Extender. They have to be updated again and it's a lot of annoying work. So you best want to leave it as it is on this version. I mean, the game is... I mean, uh, yeah, I think Bethesda doesn't really put any serious updates anymore on Skyrim Special Edition. So make sure you have this option as well. Only update this game when I launch it. It's important because, again, if Bethesda ever pushes a small update, you're screwed because some mods don't work anymore. And then you have to check again which mods are not doing that. And that's a lot of pain, I can tell you. Okay, let's see if there's anything else which is required from us in um, this guide. I don't think so. What is this? Let me check this. Okay, yeah, this is if you download stuff automatically, but we're not going to do it anyway, so we can ignore this for now. Uh, okay, yeah, um, the guide wants us to um, set a couple of ini files, so we're going to do that. That is by going here and going to the gears, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, ini editor. All right, and let's see what he does us, what uh, which lines we need to change. In, let's see, go to Skyrim Prefs.ini, which is here, Skyrim Prefs.ini. You want to search for the following line. Um, what is it? Project A U V D. It's probably not going to find it, of course. Let's see if we can find it manually because it has, yeah, I think this is the one because it has to be, it's capital sensitive probably. So let's check. We project, uh, be enable project. UVD diffuse normals to one. That's what we have already. And the draw landscape shadows. Let's try to search for that one. Draw landscape. Doesn't it also find that's a bit strange that for some reason it can't find these um, lines. B B draw. Okay, it's B draw land shadows. Okay, equal to one. Sure, let's change that and save the ini. That's important. So you click on save and now you can close this. And then we're fine for now. Um, the thing is this guy does not handle is uh, cleaning master files. And in the past, this was a pretty annoying and frustrating job or at least not super difficult, but it required a lot of time. Um, but now with the new version four, um, this process has been simplified a little bit and i strongly suggest we're going to do this because it can help a lot preventing the game from crashing um because uh, the original skyrim esms and i'm trying to explain this a little bit uh as easy as i can these original esms um have yeah they're not perfect they have a lot of uh, missing references in example and if there are mods uh if you install mods which might um yeah have some links to these missing references then the problem is that the game might crash so even while the unofficial skyrim special edition patch probably fixes a lot um i strongly suggest we're going to um yeah clean our master files first to actually get um sse edits you can go to my page back again and as i stated here after installing model organizer 2 we're going to clean it with sse edits you can find SSE Edit on this page. You can click on Files and there's just one file. You can download SSE Edit version 4. Let's see. Um, this is not the folder I was looking for. That is this one. And then 
yeah, go to your um, to your location where you did download SSE edits. Then the easiest thing to do is just extract the folder until you have this folder. And in my case, I'm going to um, my mod tools folder. So go to the uh, folder where you did also install MO2. It's not really necessary, but I think it's easy to have a folder where you have all your modding tools pro or at least your programs. I'm going to paste that in here and I'm going to rename it to SSE edits. So I don't have this huge long file name. All right, we now need to edit or add, I should say, the two, uh, two files to Mod Organizer 2. And the way to do that is by clicking here on SKC, click on edit here. And now you can click on this plus icon to uh, click on here, add from file. And now go to your folder where you did um, yeah, extract your uh, Skyrim Special Edition, for, uh, sorry, your SSE edits program so in my case that's mod tools sse edits and we want to add our sse edits i hope i'm going to explain it well like this uh so you have this this binary and this title that's just fine leave it like it is then we also need to click here add from file again for the sse edit quick auto clean function um, yeah, cleaning master files is not the most fun thing to do, you know, but it really needs to be done to avoid any um, crash to desktop stuff. So what I suggest you're going to do is you're going to drag and oh, sorry, if you have Windows 10, that is you can. Um, yeah, um, you, you can drag your window all the way to the side of your uh, desktop until you have this choice. It's a Windows 10 feature. And what I usually do for this kind of stuff is to. Um, have two uh, windows open. So the first one is to uh, is my mod organizer two, and the other one is the actual tutorial for cleaning master files. And it's easier to have those two windows next up to each other. Uh, and that's this guide, cleaning master files. It's relatively easy. Some things might have changed a little bit because I can remember we need to uh, delete some references, but it could be that these uh, references are already fixed. But nevertheless, we're, let's just go um, go f we, nevertheless we're going to follow this guide anyway let's see if there's anything here which of interest yeah what you want to do first is you want to run SSE edit SSE edit quick auto clean wow pff, it's uh, it's getting late here already I've had quite a long day as you can uh, hear from my voice um, and then click let's see on this spoiler um, button to see what we need to do first one is pretty easy you can just launch SSE Edit quick auto clean, um, and we're going to select update that ESM. Click on OK, and the good thing is we have this quick auto clean function, which pretty much does pretty much does everything automatically. And uh, what you want to do is just wait for this until we get a message that the cleaning has been done. It's mm, probably going to take up to five minutes or something. So, yeah, see you guys in a little bit. Let's wait for it. All right. Once that finished, you see you should see also these messages quick clean uh, mode finished and background loader finished. You can close this window now um, because it will automatically save the clean plugin uh, unless you check the box that you want a backup of the <coughs> ESM files. But I don't think that's really necessary. You know, um, we're going to be cleaned it now, and I think it's fine as it is. So what you probably see here is this. Uh, this error and it will say some of these files are in our override mod directory we're going to handle that later um but these are probably so I, I thought these were some temporary files which we can save or not save but we'll deal with that later let's first continue with our guides we now want to do the same but for the dongguard.esm so run the sse edit quick auto clean we want to select dongguard press ok and it will do the same so let's wait also for this for dongguard so that went a little bit faster than the updated ESM. Um, yeah, for me, it already finished after, uh, what is it, 30 seconds or something. Okay, we can close the window again. Now we want to do some manual cleaning for Dongard at ESM. So we want to, um, uh, instead of running the uh, quick auto clean, we want to run the normal SSE edit. And let's see what we need to do because we need to delete some references. Um, okay, so let's run SSE edits. We want to click on down guard, click OK. And let's wait a little bit until everything is loaded. All right. Um, so let's see what we need to do. Double click down guard. OK, that's here. So you want to here double click down guard at ESM until we have these 
these options to select from. And now we need to go to the uh, following plugin or just following cell. What is this? Navigate to cell. So that's here. Uh, we have block five, which is here. Let's expand that. And then we have sub block three, which is here. And then we have the following reference, which ends on Riften Rect Flagon, which is here then in this case. So I want to scroll down to the red highlighted uh, Xenzi Encounter Time Riften Redway Zone. And I think it's somewhere here. Uh, yeah, I already did delete this, by the way. Um, but you probably have this here. The, um, the, the what is it this line it, it might show in red and in my case it didn't show in red i think it, this might be because i have a later version of uh, ssc edit which maybe you know fixed this issue already but nevertheless i just deleted this reference anyway so you probably would uh, see you probably still have this line here and you can delete that that's just fine like that um, there is some more stuff we need to take care of after that, and that is going to cell block two. And there we do have, uh, sorry, that's not true. Uh, block two, sub block one. There will, yeah, sorry, it is actually true. There's where, where we need to go. Um, and there we do have, let's see. So what was it? Block two, sub block one. Oh yeah, I already also did delete this reference. You probably will have this the um this line here somewhere you can delete that that's fine so right click on it remove and you probably see a uh, error message or something or sorry a warning message if you're really sure yes we are really sure so you can do that and the last thing we need to delete is going to uh, cell block eight sub block one um let's see right click to remove so we need to remove the entire sub block one that's fine so right click remove and you probably see this message again for you and yes i'm absolutely sure are sure you want to perm permanently uh let's double check now we're really sure to do that so navigate to cell block eight sub block one that's this one then right click the records yeah okay sure we'll do that because uh that's been told to us to do close ssc edit save your work sure we do that um so yeah, backup plugin is not necessarily needed, but we want to save the changes to Dongar the DSM for sure. So press OK. All right. Um, yeah, well, then we also need to clean Dongard. Uh, no, sorry, hardfire.esm. So what you want to do is launch the quick auto clean function again. Click run. And let's see, we want to click hardfire. Um, OK, and then press OK. And yeah, this is pretty much also the auto clean function. So let's wait for that as well. All right, that should also not take that long. Now you can close this window again. And the last, uh, probably the largest ESM is Dragonborn because we don't need to clean Skyrim.ESM itself. Um, yeah, well, let's run SSE edit quick auto clean again for the last file, which is Dragonborn, of course. Press OK. And let's also wait for this until this finished cleaning. Once that finished for Dragonborn, you can close this window again. And that should be pretty much it. Let's see. Um, yeah, okay. So let's check this warning again, what it says. There are files in our override directory, as I mentioned. So let's check what's in our override directory. And there's this cache stuff. Um, what you can do is, I think if we right click on this, yeah, you can right click uh, on this, select create mod, name it something like SSE edit cache and maybe let's uh, save it but let's not activate it so we we'll leave it like this that's fine maybe we name it something like um, zero zero sse edit cache in it so we know it's uh, stuff we're not going to need all right so that's it for cleaning the uh, masters uh, i know this is not really the most fun thing to do but it's i think it's necessary to have a stable skyrim special edition and that you're able to play it for hours and hours without having a crash because there's nothing more annoying than having a crash at this point 
Then we can actually continue installing mods from the fixes and tweaks section. So we're now going to install our first mods. A uh, funny thing is that I did record uh, half of this part yesterday, but then all of a sudden I did realize a lot of mods have been added since the last time I've been uh, following this list. And I have to say, it are a lot of fixes and tweaks mods, and I do notice that you really have to pay attention because it's really easy to miss a mod, especially the ones which, re which require a lot of patches. An example, guard dialogue overall here, you have all these patches, so you have to make sure to download the correct amount of mods. A good thing, however, the last time I did download everything on here, there were a couple of mods missing, there were set hidden by mod authors, but that seems to be fixed at this moment while we speak at the 2nd of February 2021. So I would say let's just go ahead with the first mod. So like I said before, what I usually love to do is number my mods. So let's see, I can delete this stuff uh, that's not needed anymore because I had to renumber some of my mods. Since I miss, I uh, had some missing mods, which I didn't download the last time I did test out this mod list. So for me, there are actually also some new mods. So that's even more important to test stability with you guys. Anyway, our first mod which we're going to need is Fixes and Tweaks is the address library for SKSE plugins. So um, yeah, I always open up mods in new tabs, then it's easier for me to close the tab and go back to the mod list. Go to files and download the all-in-one uh, file. So again, to make it a little bit clear, I, uh, I renamed this in this numbering, 01 all-in-one. <clears throat> and I would say let's just start installing a mod and that you can do by clicking on this icon install a new mod from archive and just double click on the other one click on manual because we what we want to do is we want to make sure that the the mod has been packed correctly because sometimes mod authors do not pack their mods correctly and then you need to correct the data folder uh, in the mod because that's the folder that mod organizer 2 can handle the data folder and it will um, yeah, handle all those mods, nothing like EMBs and other mods which are not installed in the data folder, but everything in the data folder is manageable by Mod Organizer 2. Then you can click on OK. And after we activate, uh, sorry, after we install the mod, you always need to activate it by checking the checkbox in front of the mod. If the mod then contains an ESP file, so a plugin, it will automatically appear here. All right, so yeah, we pretty much need to do this for all the other mods here. Um, so yeah, I would say um, if you know how to download mods, go ahead, feel free to do it yourself. And for the ones who are new, I will make sure to m uh, handle every mod now. And I also have to make sure to read the description very carefully, not to download the incorrect mods. So I usually open up a couple of them to speed things up a little bit. Um, lately, it can be that sometimes Nexus Mods uh, has a timeout on the mod page, so that's why I keeping an eye out here um, to make sure I have all the mods. So let's see, the SSE engine fixes, that is actually on this site itself. So what I usually do is just duplicate the page, then go to files, and we can download the SSE engine fixes here. So download this mod and then, yeah, name it Zero2. Um, so that's this mod then. Then we have bug fixes, download the main mod from bug fixes. The NetScript framework at Skyrim, download the main file. Uh, the private profile redirector SE, there's also one file yeah, for special edition, not for virtual reality, of course, the SE. And stay at the system page, you can download that one as well. So everything up to stay at the system page. Let's see if there's anything um, yeah, we need to do. Nope, doesn't seem so. That means we can just install those mods. So SSE engine fixes, click on this icon, then click the second mod. So SSE engine fixes, which you did download, click on manual, press OK, activate the mod, etc. You know, um, I've explained it so many times. And for the new people who are new to modding, uh, just follow my instructions if you are really unsure how to do things like this. But this is pretty much how we can download and install mods in Mod Organizer 2 manually. And the reason why I do have these mods manually, I might have explained it already, is that if for some reason my computer crashes, my Skyrim crashes, I need to start all over. I have everything in order already in this order. I can just easily add all the mods in that order and activate them and I'm good to go. So that's the reason why I make sure to have everything tidy and nice. And again, if I do have a, um, an auto installer with Wabajack, you will probably download it from Nexus Mods itself. 
Um, but for now, unfortunately, I'm not able to do it right now. I'm currently looking into it to hopefully have somewhat of a more easier downloader and automated installer than doing this stuff manually. But then again, doing this stuff manually, you are, yeah, it's more easy to troubleshoot because I think if you have a fully automated list and you have no idea what you're actually doing regarding mod installations, it can be really, really difficult to troubleshoot what's wrong. All right, the private profile, the redirector, click manual, okay. These are all Skyrim script extender scripts. That's a mouthful. Um, the last one is stay at the system page. That's zero six. Awesome. Okay. Click manual, press okay. All right. So that's everything up to stay at the system page. So the next mods starting from yes, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure better dialog controls, better message controls, better jumping and the first word silent voice. Let's open those mods up. If there are some mods in between which have not been handled by me, they might have been added or removed. That's also possible uh, after I did publish that tutorial. In that case, just follow the, ins the uh, download and installation uh, order uh, as the mods are stated in this list. That's fine. All right. So yes, I'm sure it's just a single file. Better dialogue controls is just a single file. Better message box controls. It's just a single file, better jumping special edition. It's also a single file for Skyrim script extender. And the first word uh, voice, silent voice is also a single mod. So again, I would like to advise you to check that you do download the correct version because it's highly possible that I somewhat uh, yeah, didn't read everything correctly what the author states to download. So it's always nice to check it for yourself. Again, it might be possible that I missed something, especially this guy while this guy is being updated all the time yeah some some things can definitely be different than what i have so the yes i'm sure mod click manual press ok and what i usually do is i check a little bit with the mods i do have do have opened that that's also the correct order of installing things then mod 08 is the better dialogue controls yes that's correct click manual ok then we do have better message box controls yeah so far so good manual okay um better jumping yes manual okay and number 11 first word out silent voice manual okay awesome so yeah it's quite a long and boring part this um uh, engine uh, fixes uh, part but uh, yeah it's very important of course no explanation needed for that First Roda, that was the last mod that we did with that we did download and install. So the no edge glow is next, the enhanced enhancement reload fix, hard fires, houses building fix, infinite gold for merchants, uh, an alternate conversation camera. Yeah, that's yeah, let's let's leave it like uh, until there. So the no edge glow doesn't load <laughs> for some reason. Let's see what's wrong. Okay, now it does. Uh, click on files, download the main version. Enhancement reload fix. It's probably also, yeah, just a single main file. Download that. Hard fires, house building fix. Also one main file, easy. Infinite gold for merchants. Download uh, that one as well. Unless you really want to have limited gold for merchants. If that's really your thing. If you love the vanilla way of how things work, then feel free to skip this mod. It's absolutely not necessary, but it's, yeah. You know, things like these are really, really optional. Uh, the same applies to this, by the way, alternate conversion camera. This is more like the camera style as they have in The Witcher 3. Um, so not from first person uh, only, but a little bit from uh, from you as a player to NPC. Um, yeah, also it might, it's just, yeah, it might be a little bit uh, subjective, so only install this if you like it. But I have to be honest, normally I don't like these kind of uh, mods, but yeah, it, it really worked well. It really gives a fresh look to the game in my opinion, so that's why I'm going to download it as well. So number 12, that's the No Edge Glow. Click manual, okay. Activate the mod. 13 is Enhancement Reload Fix. Click manual, okay. Activate the mod. Number 14, Hard Fires Houses Building Fix. Yeah, manual, okay. All looks good. It's, I mean, it's pretty unique that all of these mods have been packed correctly. Usually a lot of mods are packed incorrectly, which you need to correct all the time. But for now, everything is good. Uh, 15 is Infinite Gold for Merchants. 
And this is the first mod which has an options form. What I usually do is click on this drop down menu here and select the number in front of it. So I have my original file name. So I'll have a better overview for my list. And here we have an options for, I'm just going for infinite gold for merchants, English version, and I press okay. And let's see, we also have the alternate camera, conversation camera, yes. Click manual, press okay. All right, awesome. I think, I hope we are uh, over health by now. Um, yeah, it looks like it. So let's see, the last month was the alternate conversion camera, conversation camera, I should say. The fix note icon for SkyUI, the SSE FPS stabilizer, the unequipped quiver SE. Um, I don't think I have this one, but let's just check what it does. The dialogue movement enabler. I also not 100% sure if I have this. So let's leave it till there. I think that's fine. Fix note icon for uh, SkyUI SKSE 64 bit plugin. I think it's just the main version, right? I have to check this as well. Uh, where is this? This one, fixed note, yeah, the main version. Okay, the FPS stabilizer, uh, the main file, I think. Where is it? Let's see. Um, yeah, the main file, the unequipped quiver. What this do does, I think it does, is it will hide the quiver, um, which is something, yeah, that you, if you like it, uh, sure, go ahead. but. I actually like the quiver, so um, I might not install this. And the dialogue movement enabler is, um, I, I think it might interfere a little bit with, with the other um, dialogue camera which we had. So I might also skip this one. So let's see. Let's first go to the fix note icon for Sky. Right, click manual, press OK, activate the mod. The uh, SSC FPS stabilizer we really want. Yes, okay. Click manual, press okay. So let's see um, the mod I have now then, which is number 19. Yeah, as you can see, I didn't download those mods. So yeah, again, if you want them, you can uh, install, uh, download and install them, but I'm not going to pick them. So after that, what do we have? Um, let's see. I think MPC AI process position fix. Download the main version. I had that right. Yeah. Okay. Here we are. Back on track. Click manual. Press OK and SKC. Awesome. So we can continue from this. The MPC AI position fix. And if you see here, then the one hit animation framework, the stagger direction fix, the better combat escape SSE for Skyrim Special Edition and the simple weapon swing parry. Let's, uh, yeah, install this stuff. I'll see a lot of fixes, but they are definitely worth it. all added up for having a better playable, stable Skyrim Special Edition. So it's all still laying the, yeah, you know, the, the groundwork for a better and stable, more stable Skyrim Special Edition. So still very important stuff. One hit animations framework. You can download that main file, the stagger, direction fix download also the main file better combat escape download the main file this is really helpful by the way i know what it does um simple weapon swing parry yeah you can also download that one i'm not 100 percent sure what it does but maybe the name might already be straightforward enough um okay so we have our um our mods which we did download sometimes the file name do not really uh, match up with the original mod or the file name is just some really basic file name then you can either rename that to your uh, mod but yeah you know it doesn't really matter that much so the better comet escape and the simple weapon swing parry we have all right that's number 23 all right awesome and then we have all this stuff. Um, oh, that's my video recorder. I don't want to mess with that. So let's see. Then we do have, uh, yeah, uh, this. That is the unofficial uh, high definition audio project. And this, as far as I know, was the mod that's, that pretty much um, just overall the original audio, the original tracks and the original uh, sounds. Is that true? High def restoration? Yeah, that's true. 
And we later on, we're going to install another audio project, but I'm going to uh, explain a little bit about that before you yeah, want to install it, before you can decide for yourself if you want to install it. Uh, we want to download three parts. First, music, high quality, then voices, English part one, voices, English part two. Um, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. So maybe let's just do that first. Then, so the music file first. These are quite large files, if I'm not mistaken. So let's wait a little bit for it. All right, then of course, don't forget to activate. Um, yeah, then we have these English voices, part one and part two. So click manual, click okay. And let's wait. Okay, and then part two, the same for that number 26. Click manual, press okay. And also let's wait for this one. Okay. So this is quite a large mod, uh, the unofficial high definition audio project. Then a very, very, very important mod, the unofficial Skyrim special edition patch, the file which I think Bethesda originally all had to uh, perform all these fixes. But yeah, modders had to clean up their mess in the unofficial uh, Skyrim special edition patch. Very important mod. Download it and let's add it. So um, to make sure we don't forget, I'm just going to focus on the Unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch. Press OK. Let's wait a little bit for it. Yes, OK. It's not that large in file size. It's, uh, what is it? Oh, yeah. It's moderate, large, moderately large, 145 megabytes. But a very important 145 megabytes. Then we have uh, still a lot of fixes, but we're getting near the end, so that's a good thing. Skyrim Landscapes and sorry landscape and water fixes we have a fomod installer and that means it is an automated installer just a single file that means we have a couple of options that's pretty much what a fomod is let's see what we need to check according to this guide because i'm not 100 percent sure what mods are still left in this list walkway wall fix static mesh improvement mods that's what this means um leave everything else in install okay sure and we want to rename this of course to make sure we have a nice order of mods here all right um okay so then we have the skyrim fixes collection cutting room floor cards yeah let's do the guard dialogue overall um a little bit later because there are a lot of patches so first, the Skyrim Fixes Collection. Download the main file. Cutting Room Floor is also a nice mod. It will bring some original content back to the game. Uh, download that mod as well. So number 29 and 30. The Fixes Collection plus Manual. Press OK. And number 30 is Cutting Room Floor. Here it is. Press Manual. Press OK. Awesome. Okay, then some mods which require a lot of patch files, so we have to pay attention a little bit. Um, guard dialog overhaul, we have the guard guard dialog overhaul uh, UHDAP patch, not sure what that is. Um, and uh, let's see, okay, it's not, not that super many patches, I thought there were more patches, but anyway, let's make sure we are installing everything in a correct order. That's first 31, the guard dialog overall. And here yesterday, I pretty much lost my focus at this point. And then I also noticed that I was missing a lot of these mods which have been newly added. So I did decide to delete the entire part of the tutorial and now re-record it again. So it's the second time I've seen a lot of these mods. And number 32, uh, sorry, did I explain already what to do? Uh, sorry, click files, guard dialog overall and download the main patch file. But I'm pretty sure you guys were smart enough to find that already. All right. The patch file, here it is, press OK. Awesome, activate. So that's everything for guard dialog overhaul regarding patches, just a single patch, not too bad. Uh, I think this is the one which is a little bit more complicated then. We have the relationship dialog overhaul, the relationship dialog overhaul infinite gold for merchants patch because that's what we did install. Uh, we have the patches final. And I think this is from the this page itself. And we do also have the update in MCM uh, patch. And I think that's everything for relationship, relationship dialogue overhaul. 
So first, let's open up the original Mate relationship dialog overall and download the um, yeah the main file. Let me double check in a bit that I'm also um, sure that I install everything correctly. So RDO final, press manual, press OK. And activate and let's see if I really did everything correctly. So relationship dialog overall, the main file, the infinite gold for merchants patch is this one. Click files. It's also just a single file. Can't really go wrong with that. Number 34. Um, yes. All right. Awesome. Manual press. OK. OK, this is from this website itself. Uh, sorry, from this mod page itself. And this is what what is this called? The RDO patches final. So let's duplicate our mod list and go to files. And search for RDO patches final, which should be here somewhere. Yeah, here it is. Download that file. Um, so that is pretty much this one and re relationship dialog overall the update in MCM. You also want to download that main file here. All right. So 35. Let's see. Did I really? Yeah. Okay. The patch is final. That's this one. And 36 is then that MCM update. Yeah. Awesome. Click manual. Press OK. Whew. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting near the end of this part. Um, one of the boring parts, but also the more important part. Then we do have, let's see, what do we have more? Uh, weapons, armor, clothing, and clutter fixes, and armor, and clothing extension. From weapons, armor, clothing, and clutter fixes, we need to download the main file, and you want to download the 4K textures. Here is where we can select textures. This is the first mod. Um, yeah, regarding this, if you have a super good computer, and with a super good computer, I do mean um, if you, an example, play in 1080p, you have a good i5 CPU uh, with high clock speed, and at least at least a 1070 in GTX 1070 or something similar from AMD, go for the 4K textures. Uh, preferably, the 4K 2K textures or pure 2K textures are usually the best choice regarding. Um, yeah, performance. But if you have, yeah, let's say a 1080 Ti or RT, uh, GTX 1080 Ti or an RTX 2080 or in my case an RTX 3080, then you can go all out. Feel free to download the 4K textures. Uh, before my RTX 3080, I had a GTX 1080 Ti. I'm running a pretty fast CPU in i7 9700K, but also with my 1080 Ti, 4K textures, no problem at all. So I'm going for 4K textures. If you have a 1070 or Lower, you might want to stick to the 2K textures. And if you have an even a very poor GPU, then you want to stick to the 2K, 1K textures. If you have a little bit of a budget CPU, like a 1060 or 2060 or something like that, 1060 Ti, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't follow this guide. You just have to be careful regarding the quality textures, uh, which you're going to pick from now on. But since I have a high uh, end system, I always go for 4K textures. I don't even think about downloading 4K textures anymore. So we have this file and the textures file. Same applies for armor and clothing extension. Download the main file and the fork. Yeah, you know, <laughs> just the texture which applies to you. I'm going to stick for the 4K textures. So let's install that stuff, I would say. So number 37 is weapons and armor, clothing fixes, manual. OK, and the textures which belong to that mod. So 4K in my case. Then 39 is the same for the weapons stuff or vice versa. What is it? I started with weapons and now for the armors, I think. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. Okay. Manual. And do the same for the textures, which you did download. Awesome. Press manual, press OK. And in meanwhile, I'm going to look if I missed anything. So we do have fixes for armor and clothing extension. Make sure to um, activate the textures. Fixes for armor and clothing extension. Download the main file. Awesome. Now also, in my opinion, 
maybe the most or the second most important mod, third most important mod, at least the top three most important mod, SkyUI. This is a mod which I've been using since uh, I think December 2011, so a month after the release of Skyrim. Uh, a complete overall for the user interface, but in my opinion, absolutely necessary for the PC. It makes it so much better and so much better playable. So SkyUI, download it really really want to download it and you want to have a patch file for this which i didn't know existed it's a flashing save games fix so download that one as well if it loads up yeah click files download the main file all right let's add number 42 sky away click manual maybe the order is a little bit different for you if you did download that camera mod earlier on and the quiver month and number 43 in my case the flashing save game fix click manual press ok and the last but oh sorry we didn't download that yet let me show you what it is that is race menu oh we're not there yet by the way there's something i want to show you guys race menu it's a really nice extensive mod if you want to download oh uh, sorry if you want to create a character and that's just the race menu special edition because this is for the virtual reality version of skyrim go with number 44 Click manual, press OK. All right. All right, before we end this part, there is something I knew, um, I usually do after installing a lot of these fixes and stuff. And that is, um, let's see what, um, because the at this point, the author of the guide advises to uh, sort ev everything out. I think that might be a good thing to do. So let's open this stuff up to show you a little bit what he means. And he does this at every section of the tutorial. Um, enable all visible. Yeah, that's just pretty much enabling all the plugins. But that's been done already in our case. Um, delete all the downloads. We, do, we're, we don't need to do that because we did download everything manually. Oh, yeah. That's what he, he does. He sorts the plugins with... Um, with yeah a built-in loot program that's maybe you remember that from the old skyrim days loot automatically uh order your plugins i normally i'm not a super um, huge fan of to do that because sometimes it can do more harm than good but i have to say uh mod organizer 2 the loot function has been yeah it's doing a very good job actually so i'm clicking on click on sort and then press yes you want to sort your plugins because why is this needed? Um, sometimes mods have a master mod and a uh, yeah more ad ad more additional mod. And in an example, you might have a main mod and it has a patch file. In that case, the main mod is the master file. And if you uh, swap out the patch file, if you an example choose the patch file first to be loaded and the, the original mod after your game probably will crash. So it's important. Okay, let's see. Um, all right. So everything looks okay. It's, as you can see, the order changes as well. And we don't have any errors, which is good. No notifications. If this pops up, then usually a master file is missing. A master plugin is missing. So you might have downloaded and installed a patch file, not having the original file, but that's all good. Um, before we jump into game to test everything, what I usually do after installing all of the foundation mods, the stability mods, is downloading the following mods. Um, and that is, let's see, do I have that? It's probably not here. So I do have it here. Alternate start, live another life. The reason for that is actually two reasons. Is we want to have a new game. Uh, we want to start a new game as a test game, somewhat as a foundation where we can test all of our mods. What you don't want to do is load your existing fully modded game because that will give you a world of <laughs> of hurts and a lot of errors probably of all the missing stuff it's it's been finding so if you might have never modded your skyrim special edition sure feel free to use your existing save game but i think a lot of you guys already in the past did mod all of your save games so really really please start a new save game and uh, yeah you know name name your character uh, someone like test character 2021 that's what i usually do and to help us with that is uh, using Elden start live another life because we can start a new game and we can immediately jump into the game without having to watch that annoyingly long Helgen sequence in the car through the dragon etc etc and also another thing is that we can test Skyrim script extender if that works because if it doesn't work 
uh, we can now find it out and not after we install 250 mods. So definitely recommend it to download the mods. You can go to files, download alternate start, live another life. Feel free to add that one. And I uh, named it uh, like this because uh, it's not part of the official mod list, but I definitely recommend to install this. So let's see, maybe yeah, uh, click manual. That looks good. And feel free to just sort the plugins again doesn't really hurt i have to say again uh, loot in uh, the newer versions of loot are doing a very good job in mod organizer 2. what's important now is that you want to click on here and make sure you launch the game from skyrim script extender so not skyrim special edition not the launcher because then it will start the steam version and this will not launch your mods you want to have skyrim script extender uh to be run from this plugin so Click on run and I have to say it might take a little while before the game starts up and the reason for that is you're uh, missing a couple of um, logo screens if I'm not mistaken we have modded them out and also the first initialization of the EMB takes uh, it might take up to 30 seconds and that's even on my pretty uh, yeah above average PC so uh, make sure that you wait at least a minute I, I i have to say you can have a black screen for uh yeah probably up to a minute or something don't panic it's normal and wait until you come to the main screen and then i'll see you guys over there all right welcome in game um at least welcome in the menu so press new to start a new game and this should start yeah as you can see we now have a direct option to uh, create a character uh, because that means our Skyrim script extender is working because random alternate start is working. So just, yeah, I don't know, create something. It doesn't really matter um, as a test character. How can I, uh, let's see. Um, and this are done. Finish your name character. So I'm going to name my character test care 2021 February. And you can see the 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 times how many times I mod Skyrim. I really have to use names like this. So this is just a temporary uh, save game we're going to use um, for the rest of the tutorial. So don't really load up your current save games because it will probably mess up everything if you have a lot of mods mods already installed in your older save games. Press Enter. Random alternate start allows you to just randomly start somewhere. Um, Let's see. So yeah, you can use the statue here to uh, to activate. Approach, my child, and choose where your Which new life shall begin. To. All right. Uh, let's start. Surprise me. So be it. Wherever you may sail to, a life filled with opportunity awaits you, traveler. All right. Awesome. So yeah, then you can just uh, rest in the bed, and your adventure will begin. So that's a good thing. So now it's. Um, What's nice about this is that you can just uh, yeah start immediately in the game and you don't have to you know watch the annoying Helgen sequence etc etc. So uh, if you want to change some controls now it might be a good time to do that as well. In my case I want to sprint with my left shift button for some reason that's always that's not being recognized by the Steam settings um, with a bit of cloud backup. So yeah I guess that's pretty much it for now. All right then yeah. Um, I think we deserved a nice cup of coffee because of all those uh, install system mods. Um, so I'm going to drink a large cup of coffee and I hope to see you guys at the next part. Uh, yeah, maybe you're going to watch it tomorrow or in the weekend, whatever. I don't care. So thank you very much for watching this part. Hope to see you at the next part where we're going to install a lot more fun mods than these boring, uh, yeah, you know, stable foundation mods. Yeah, yeah, we know it by now. So again, thanks for watching. See you at the next part.